as a Singaporean who grew up in the generation we did, maybe there's a sense of guilt that I benefited from all of the economic accomplishments of the country that was a consequence of the sacrifice our families had to make. You grow up hearing about this additional identity, then you start to imagine how it might be if the island was still available for us to continue living as the next generation on the island. about national history is a very linear kind of story that sometimes do not appreciate the little things. By remembering the history of the islands, um, we are also in some ways broadening the history of um, Singapore itself. In some ways, the research that has been done on the island has uh, started a little bit too late. Many of the people who are living on the islands have passed on and if we do not do this immediately, then we're going to lose a lot more of these stories. It is very heartening to see a lot of the younger generations pick up the mantle to try to remember the histories of their families who used to live on these islands. So what do you tell your children and grandchildren about your life on the island? Are they? I don't want the heritage of being near and in the sea to be lost. So I'm writing a book. Yes, you have. Yeah, yeah my initiation. My yeah. And Amira. Amira, yeah. 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 I'm going to write stories of my childhood. So hopefully it'll be something for them to remember by and I hope it can be shared. One of my children, especially Nisa. Your eldest, yeah. Yes. She have even extended her interest on the sea to become a mermaid. She always believed that she was a mermaid when she was young. By the I know day. she has that wonderful mermaid yeah. costume as well. As someone who grew up with a dad who has such a strong identity as an islander, being a mermaid is a outward expression of that love of the ocean for me. It's a little bit like free diving. Mostly it's people putting on tails with specialized flippers. We hold our breath, we swim underwater, as someone not being able to have an island to go back to, at least having the water to go to, having a community who has the same belief as I do, that's, that's been very, very freeing and very affirming for me also, so yeah. So now that there are plans to reopen Brani um, to the public and to redevelop the island, I feel a sense of anticipation. How do you feel? There's a little bit of anger in me. You can. Uh, maximize the economic prospects of the island. But then you have to also remember to pay homage to yeah. the past. We've been trying to develop the country for so long yeah. that we we can have the space to take a step back yes. and um, acknowledge the other facets of what a Singapore is. Yes. I really hope that Pulau Brani of the future will still resonate with the stories of the past. And in fact, the past is not at odds with the future at all. We can have islanders continue to be able to tell stories as tour guides where the exuberance of their childhoods really do get expressed. A living history, if you will. It's also evocative of maybe a couple of other people's childhood. Maybe that will inspire them to, to share. Yeah. Um, and that tradition of oral history doesn't have to die out in our grandparents' generation. Maybe it's something that we can bring forward. Thank <laughs> you.